Hey guys, CB Super. Welcome to the first episode of Fusion Tab Basics. Today we're going to be going over the Fusion Tab, but more importantly, we're going to be going over the relationship between DaVinci Resolve and the Fusion Tab and understanding what the Fusion Tab actually is and what you're doing when you're working inside of the Fusion Comps. So here we have some footage already down on the timeline and it's very important to look up here in this left hand screen. Uh, once you drop some footage onto the timeline, it actually creates a timeline. Now you can always click back to this timeline by clicking on the timeline in the media folder. And we're going to be doing this later on. So keep in mind, anytime you want to get back to your original timeline, it's going to be timeline one. And all you have to do is double click on it. Now you're going to create some additional timelines later on, but that's not important just yet. So before we get into actually jumping over to the Fusion tab, we have to look at what's taking place on this timeline because the way that this timeline is set up will determine what you see when you jump over to Fusion. Whatever this red playhead is touching is going to be the clip that gets sent over to Fusion when I click on the Fusion tab button. It's also going to consider if there's a video clip that's on top of another video clip, it's going to show the video clip that is on top. Since there's no video clip directly above where this playhead is, it will send this classical guitar clip. But once I move the playhead over this uh, coffee clip, it will then send this coffee clip. So let's see that in action here. So over here, I don't have to click on any of the clips. All I have to do is hover the playhead over where I want and then click on the Fusion tab. And once it jumps over to the Fusion tab, we now see that the guitar footage is loaded up. But we also see these clips down here below. Now, if you don't see these clips, up in the top left hand side of the screen, there is some, there's the media pool, which all you have to do if you want to see the media pool, you can go ahead and click on that. There is the effects library, which we're not going to get into just yet. And then there's clips. Obviously, if you click on this nodes, it's just going to get rid of that node viewer, which the nodes is quite honestly the most important part. I don't think I've ever not had the nodes visible unless I wanted to see more for a playback. So here we can see the actual clips. Now there's four clips on our timeline and we see four clips down here. Just as you would expect, if I click on one of these other clips, it's going to jump to that specific clip. Let's say if I come back over and maybe I want to use my blade tool and I want to make a slice here and now I've separated these two clips. Now when I jump back over to Fusion, uh, it's still, because it was touching the, the coffee clip, which is higher than the other clip, than the guitar clip, but you'll notice that now I have two of these guitar clips. And so one thing to note is that if you look at this timeline viewer up here, we'll also see how it kind of changes between the clip size. So you notice that this one starts at 215 and it goes to 430 frame. Those are frame numbers. And this one goes from zero to 213. So it basically leaves off where the next one goes. So when you're in Fusion, you're actually using time as frames. And that's something that takes a little getting used to. So if you're working in a 30 frames per second clip or 30 frames per second footage, frame 30 will be right around one second or 24 frames or vice versa. However, whatever frame rate you're working in. So down here, we have access to the clips. We can change the clips if we need to. And then um, we can also come over here to the edit page and we have, you know, the ability to move the playhead and we can jump over to Fusion that way. So that's the playhead and that's how to get to Fusion. But let's take a look at this first clip here. You may or may not know that you can actually add effects to your footage inside of DaVinci without even being in the Fusion tab. So if you come into the effects library, you have these open effects and you have tons of different effects. Now some of these, if you're working on the free version like I am, you may not have access to all of these effects, but some of them you do. And so I can use say a Gaussian blur, but what, let's say I wanna use this lens blur and I drop it onto my footage. This little watermark will come up and say, uh, you can't use this, you've reached the end of your, your free trial basically. And it'll ask you, do you want to purchase the, you know, the actual real version? It's nice that it shows you what exactly it would look like if you did have the studio version. But to be honest, we can do a lot of these functions inside of Fusion and we can do it for free. So I'll show you how to do that in later videos. But for right now, just know that some of these effects you can use, some of these you can't. But let's say this Gaussian blur. Let's go ahead and drop this Gaussian blur on there. And you notice that it blurred it out. And we have a new tab over here in the inspector that says open effects. We left click on that. We can actually adjust the horizontal strength. 
Uh, let's say that that is the way that we want it. But I also want to adjust something in Fusion. So now that I've added this effect in the Edit tab, if I jump over to Fusion, we'll notice that the effect is not there. And there's no option, there's no node for the effect. So we're going to click off this clips for now so we have a little bit more space. So the reason that there's no effect there is because anything that you do inside of Fusion takes place prior to the Edit tab. And that's super important to know because that will dictate how we will do our workflow. Now there is a way to get around this. Um, the way to get around this would be simply to right click and add a new Fusion clip. Now we can jump back over to Fusion and although we can't actually edit any of that effect that we put on there, we'll notice that it is still affecting it and we can now work within Fusion on the clip that has already been affected. If we wanted to, you know, likewise come back and adjust that, you'll notice that if we click on this, there's no option to adjust that effects. It seems like it's baked in, but it's not. All we have to do is right click, open in timeline, and now we can come in back to the open effects. And let's say we wanna turn that blur down just a little bit, and then back over to the media pool. Like I said, we're gonna be going back to timeline one again, cause that's where all of our footage lives. It all lives on that timeline one. And now you'll see that it's been updated, but you still don't have access to that uh, open effect. So yes, you can use the effects from the edit tab. Just know that when you, ju when you jump back over to Fusion, it is before those effects. So when things start to get a little complicated is when you create the Fusion clip, jump over to Fusion. Let's say we want to add this ellipse tool. Well, it all works and it's blurred, but in order to adjust that open effects again, we have to come back here, we open this in the timeline, and now we can come back in here and you'll notice that the ellipse is gone because everything that took place before Fusion is now in this timeline. So we added that ellipse after turning it into a Fusion clip. So let's say we wanna turn that effect back up. Now we can come back over into timeline one. And now we're back in the current timeline, which timeline one is always gonna be the current timeline. And by being back in timeline one, now we see that we have our Gaussian blur the way that we wanted it, and we also have the ellipse. So I know that might be a little bit confusing, but that's super important that we understand that anything that we do in Fusion takes place before the effects that we add inside of the Edit tab. It also takes place before any of the effects we add in the Color tab. We'll just use this coffee one here, and we'll jump into the Color tab, and maybe we'll just darken it up a little bit. All right, so that's nice and dark. Now we jump back over to the Edit tab. You'll see that it is, in fact, darkened. But if we jump over to the Fusion tab, we'll see that it's it's back to bright again. Where we run into a problem, if somebody has already gone and color corrected the footage and you have the raw footage, the problem lies in when, say, you want to come in here and you want to shift space and you want to enter in a color correction node, and then maybe you want to gamma it down a bit. Well, when you jump back over to the edit tab, now it's gonna be double dark because you are processing Fusion first and then you're processing the color tab. So that being said, we now know that Fusion effects take place before anything in the color tab and anything in the edit tab, except for when you use a Fusion clip. So in this footage, let's say we wanna use both of these clips, but we wanna have them transition into each other. Let's go ahead and select both of these clips and I'm going to right click and I'm gonna create a new Fusion clip. So what it's done is it's combined these two clips into one clip. And so when I jump over to the Fusion tab, you'll notice that I see Media 1 and Media 2 and they're merged together and then the Media Out shows the, the product of those merges. And I know we haven't really talked about the flow too much, but one thing we need to know is that I have both of the medias in here and I can do stuff to those medias. Whereas if I come back here and I'm gonna Command Z this, let's say I was to just hold, uh, select both these, come over to Fusion, I only see one media. It doesn't bring both of them over. Let's say that I combine these into a new compound clip. Create. It's combined them both, but I jump into Fusion and now I still only have access to one of the media nodes. So let me come back out, Command Z that. The nice thing about doing that compound clip though is if I wanted to maybe, you know, offset the timing on these so that this creates its own clip, 
what I can do is I can right click and I can create a new compound clip. And we know, even though we've created a compound clip, we can always go back and open this up in its own timeline to adjust these two clips, but it's essentially still baked it together inside of Fusion. It won't give me access to both of the media nodes. I still only have access to the one, but they do transition. So you'll see I still have the, you know, the guitar clips and it transitions to the coffee clip, but I only have one media node. So let's take a look at what happens when I combine both of these clips like this and I turn it into a new Fusion clip. Well, that's pretty cool. I get this clip, but I can't see the second clip that it transitions into. So that's kind of weird. Let's go ahead and jump into Fusion and see exactly what's taking place here. So one thing about Fusion is that everything is driven by whatever's in the background. And so this is considered the background. This is a yellow background. Right. So anything that's in this flow right here of the yellow flow is going to always be in the background. Now, I know that this media, too, is in the foreground because it has a green arrow. Now, if we look at it, it actually will tell us that it's in the foreground. See that little black bar underneath the merge node? It says media two output merge one foreground. If we just hover over the yellow line, it says media in output merge one background. Let's take a look at this in the keyframe editor. So if we open this up, we'll see the media out node. There's a merge node, which, you know, that just merges these two medias together. And then there's a media in one and there's a media in two. Media one in is the one that's in the background. So you'll notice that the actual media out node is the same as whatever's in the background. So it's as long as the background clip. Unfortunately, media two extends beyond the background clip. Therefore, it's it's essentially clipped off. The media out is not outputting after the media one ends. And we, we can fix that pretty easily. But it's just something to take into consideration that when you are setting up your flows, you want to set them up so that the background will be as long as the clip that you actually want. Now, you don't necessarily have to change it all you have to do is you can actually bring in a background node, which is that first little node in your toolbar there. You can take the background node, you can go ahead and disconnect this one for now, and we can take this media and we can merge it on top of the background. Now we don't want to hold it on the background because if we do that, it's going to bring it in as a mask, which we don't want the media to mask it out. You can drop it, it's called kissing, where you just kiss the very end of this output here, the little gray square. That'll drop it into a merge. And what you're doing is you're merging this first media onto this background. And by doing so, you have now essentially fixed your problem. Um, so now if we come over here to the keyframe editor, we'll look and we'll see, okay, the media out is now as long as the background node. And so the background node is only going to be as long as the total compound clip or the total fusion clip was. So that is kind of an easy way to just fix it really quickly. But that workflow is going to carry on into almost every single flow that you build from here on out. Always be thinking of the background is going to control pretty much the desired look of your clip. And so this also applies to resolution. You'll notice that the resolution of this background, if we click over here onto the inspector and in the middle tab is where the settings are, you'll see that the width is 1920 and the height is 1080. We are working within a 1920 by 1080 space. So everything that you bring in is going to automatically be 1920 by 1080. But that doesn't mean that you can't have something that's larger. So let me bring in this other background. And I'm actually going to click off of auto resolution. And this is going to be just a 4K square. Now I'm going to kind of move this over here. I'm going to disconnect it from here real quick. And I'm going to take this background, which we know to be 1920 by 1080, and this background, which we know to be 4K. I'm going to merge this background on top of this background. And now we'll take a look at what it's outputting at. We'll go ahead and make this background white so we can actually see it. You'll see that this background that's 1920 by 1080 is merged onto this 4K square background. I know this is called a background node, but this is just a background generator node. I could call this node anything. But whatever this node is, is going to be determining what the resolution of the comp is. Now, that's not to say that you can't change this later using a resize node, 
We just need to understand that the background node or whatever's in the background flow is going to generate the look of your comp. It's resolution independent in that you can bring in footages and medias that are all different resolutions and they can all work inside the exact same comp. And then your comp can be whatever resolution you want it to be. So that's something that we always have to take into consideration when we're building a fusion composition is what is the background flow? And is the background flow affecting what we see when we come back over into the edit tab, which it absolutely does. All right, so that's pretty much it for the basics on understanding the Fusion tab, and it's the Fusion tab's relation to DaVinci Resolve. In the next episode, we're actually going to jump into Fusion, and we're going to talk a little bit about node structure, how the nodes work, and what the nodes actually do. All right, if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe, hit that bell notification, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.